We do have a representative from Tennessee, Jeremy Faison. He is the Tennessee Republican Caucus Chair joining us now. And good evening. Thanks for joining us. Can you just kind of explain to us why you believe these two members have just been expelled? Thank you. That, that's a great question. First of all, I'd like to say this is a, it's a terribly sad time. This is a very grave situation that someone would be expelled. Before that, we've had some serious tragedies in Tennessee, and the, the six innocent lives that were lost last week are, are absolutely devastating. So I want to make sure that we mention that, that that's one of the biggest things going on right now in Tennessee. You asked me specifically about why do I think they would be expelled. I think that's a great question. America deserves to know. We have several hundred years, over 200 years, of, 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 of an incredible state, incredible state house, history that's rich. Tennessee is one of the most important states in all of America. We have had literally thousands of state reps since 1796 who have, who have worked and then after 1859 have worked in this very chamber that you're seeing me in today. They have all understood that there are rules and procedures to ensure that every voice is heard. There's almost 7 million Tennesseans. And we have come up with these ideas that the best way for everybody to be heard is to make sure that we follow the rules of decorum. Co these members have come in this entire, oh, go ahead. Let me just, Representative, there interrupt to say, I understand decorum. Mm -hmm. Van was just making the point there, of course, not everyone could bring a bullhorn in every time they disagreed, otherwise it would be total chaos. But why take this step? Why, why, was there no measure you could have taken uh, before this, before expulsion, why take the most extreme step so quickly? So that's an excellent question. More than just what America has seen that took place last Thursday, there's a history all year long of disrupting committees and the House floor, getting off of the germane topic. When I say germane, that means what we're dealing with at that moment, just to make political grandstand. We've called them out. The chairman of committees, the Speaker of the House have been calling them out time and time again for grabbing the mic, sucking the air out of the room, making sure no other voice is heard. And finally, when they come and, and, and act so foolish on the House floor, this is a sacred place that belongs to everybody, and literally start looking up into the gallery with a bullhorn, getting the protesters worked up into a frenzy, that is incumbent on us to say, you've gone a step too far, and we're going to take steps to make sure that if you ever do come back, if you get reelected, that you know it's a serious thing to Tennesseans that you come and disrupt the people's house. The so speaker, I think it was very, the speaker very here, important for us to do that. The speaker here likened what they did to what happened on January 6th in Washington, D.C. Do you agree with that comparison? I believe them coming in and taking over the house. They, they called it occupying the well. The well, is, the well is where we stand up front to pass our bills. That, that, is, that is incredibly disruptive and embarrassing to the legislature, the institution that we have here. And I, I didn't see anybody in Congress try to take over. Now, I saw some really big idiots that I hope are punished to the full extent of the law come and break into the Capitol and act foolish on January 6th. But I didn't see a congressman act this way. What we saw here in Tennessee is three elected state representatives who know the rules, who understand that this place belongs to everybody. They come in and rush up here and take over the House floor and refuse, even when our Sergeant Arms, he's a gentle soul, several of them are just great men, come in and, and, and gently encourage them, guys, not right now, let's don't do this. I mean, they, told, they sent them away. It, 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 it was, it was, it's an embarrassment to everybody to see someone come and behave like that and good, gentle souls who are sergeant arms have been here for years come in there and try to encourage you, hey, you're making a mistake. And they didn't do it. And, and, and I, I'd like to add to y'all, they've, they've not backed down from that either. You know, I, I told them earlier today, I, I feel like if they would have said, you know what, we messed up. I mean, what American, what human won't bring forgiveness and redemption, but they've doubled down and went so far as to stand in the well today and said, I'd do it again. That was their mentality. That shows me when there's a pattern of behavior like that, if you refuse to stop it yourself, then we have to step in as a group of individuals that work with you and say, you'll not do that here. Well, they said they were passionate because of the underlying reason that I think is important here to also remind people, which is because six people were killed 
in a shooting last week. And just on your point on January 6th, the reason the congressmen weren't doing that is because they were being evacuated because the insurrectionists were, were taking over the Capitol. But I do want to let my, my colleague here, Van Jones, he also has a question for you. And thank you again for being here tonight. Um, uh, uh, th thank you for, for joining us. Uh, I, I just wonder, uh, yes, there, sir. There, there are people uh, who are members of that state legislature. And by the way, I, I work for uh, Jim Nafee, uh, Speaker Nafee. I got my start in the uh, state legislature. So, uh, he's and I'm, a friend. And, exactly. I love him. Uh, one, one of the best ever. And I'm, I'm from, from Madison County, born in Jackson, Tennessee. So, mm -hmm. I, so I know how things work in that state legislature. And you have an array of tools, sir, as a leader uh, to get people to comply. Uh, why did you not go to the Ethics Committee? Why did you not uh, go through a uh, due process. If you are here saying you want uh, this legislator to be respected, why are you not following the rules and using the tools that you have? You want them to not be extreme, but you're being extreme. Why is that? So uh, a lot of accusation on your part there. Yeah. We actually are following the rules, and, and we gave them ample chance. We, we, we established what was taking place on, on Monday. There was due process. Did you go to the uh, ethics committee? I, I, and, it, and it's not just up to me. There's, there's actually, you, you'll notice there were 71, I think, or 70 of the members who, after looking at what took place today, they voted to, to ex, uh, expel one of them. Why and then did you not use the, the ethics others. committee? I'm just trying to understand, why did you not go to the ethics committee and do the things that are always done in that body? You have not done this to anybody except for two people in 200 years. You can't tell me that there have not been people who have also been disruptive. You've had people that have peed on chairs that did not get expelled. So I don't understand why you skipped the ethics committee. If you want uh, re respect and if you want uh, for people to be uh, reasonable, why are you being so unreasonable and why are you skipping steps? I don't understand. You seem to be contradicting. You're not acting the way you want the young people to act. So I, the, the story of, of someone urinate on somebody's chair has is, is never been quantified. I, I, I've heard many people say that. I don't think there's any truth to that. So what you need to understand is this is a body of people who decide corporately what we're going to do moving forward. This body spoke many times. I brought our caucus together several times since last Thursday to ask the body what we as a group wanted to do. The overwhelming majority the heartbeat of this caucus says, not on this House floor, not this way. So if there was an idea of sending it to the ethics group, this group, my caucus, which is the supermajority, there are 75 of us, said, no, that is not, we don't want to go through the ethics route. We don't want them censured. We want them expelled. So when you're in leadership, you encourage people to look at all the aspects, and then you work with what the majority of your people want to do. And that's exactly what we did. Sir, it's Sarah Seidner. I, I had a question. You mentioned um, that you thought that the representatives were riling up the crowd. Um, and I can tell you from the reporters that were out there, the crowd was already riled up. They are extremely upset that your legislature wasn't trying to deal with the issue of keeping children safe in school, but instead going after these two Democrats. And I wonder, sir, who are you punishing? Because, yes, you have kicked out these two Democrats, but there are tens of thousands of constituents that are also being punished and don't have any representation right now. What do you say to them? So, first of all, let, let, let's answer the part that you said you didn't think the crowd was already worked up, so they weren't working them up. I, I'd like you to go back and watch, watch what took place today. They literally control the crowd. They control the protesters. They look at them, they do their hand like this, they do their hand like this. It's like leading a choir. So the notion that you think that they weren't getting the, the people in, incited and worked up into a frenzy, unfortunately, you weren't here. You didn't see it. That's exactly what they Our did. And they proved to us today to by standing them, up and sir. telling them. They talked to some of them, and some of them were teachers who were so distraught. They were near tears because they could not believe that their lawmakers were doing this as opposed to dealing with the, the biggest issue at hand. The number one killer of children is gun violence. And they wanted y'all to do something about that instead of wasting time in their mind when it comes to this. I mean, they literally talked about it on the air. So they were already quite worked up because they love their state and they love their kids and they want to see a safer place for the children and themselves, really. So I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's what you think, but we, we, we watched them today directing them like a choir leader would. That, that, that was what was amazing. And, and, and I'll tell you this, and unfortunately, I, I've got to go. I'm, I'm three and a half hours from home. It's not possible for us to move forward 
with the way they were behaving in committee and on the House floor. There's got to be some peace. And for them, the way they were behaving to disrupt every committee, disrupt the House floor they were, how can we get to the, to the answers of what are we going to do about gun violence? What, what are we going to do about guns and cars? What are we going to do about red flag law? The, the conversation can't happen because they're drowning out and sucking all the air out of the room. So I, I would just push back on you saying we can't get there if they won't let us. And thank you for letting me speak with you. God bless you. Representative, Representative, I know you got a long drive home. One final question for you. All right. Well, Jeremy Faison has left us. He's the Republican chair in Tennessee, of course. That was the House that voted tonight to expel these two Republicans, or these two Democrats, I should note, 